Mackey on Jones and Company speaking uh, with the Deputy Secretary General of the Commonwealth and Mr. Maharaj, um, because of the structure of the economies of the Caribbean, um, we have seen in the last six years or so uh, an increase in poverty yes. uh, throughout the region. region. Yeah. Um, from the recession of 2008, um, we have a new working poor uh, developing in the Caribbean. Uh, is the Commonwealth aware of it? And if it is aware of it, is there a program to address this? Yeah, in, in terms of the, the, the Caribbean, I mean, the data will suggest that performance is actually quite mixed. So you have places like Trinidad and Tobago where you have a poverty level, but government has the requisite resources to make the investment, conditional cash transfer schemes. You got oil. Uh, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> investments in public works program. You got oil. Um, That's what it is. The, the, the issue and the challenge really for, for policymakers, in my mind, is that we need to have a much more concerted and integrated approach yeah, to, exactly. dealing, to dealing with poverty. Exactly. Poverty is a multi-dimensional right. multi dimensional phenomenon. Right. And if it is that you want to give people handouts, to my mind, that's not the solution. It goes back to the issue of education. You re there was the first Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Eric Williams, he made a remark many years ago, and he said, the future of the nation is in your school bags, right? And education is a great equalizer. And to my mind, that's where the investments have to go, to ensure that there's quality education. As a matter of fact, next year's conference, the theme of the conference is quality education for equitable development. It's difficult for a man to learn when he's hungry, you know. And um, there are a whole lot of people, a lot of children, who are going to bed hungry throughout the Caribbean. And while the future is in the school bag, uh, the school bag is empty because there's no lunch in the school bag. There's no breakfast, uh, in, in no food in the cupboard, Mr. Mahara. Yeah. I think I, I don't know the situation of the Bahamas, so I can't come on with common um, common no, knowledge of it. I, I don't think it's region wide. No, I'm in not the talking about Trinidad. No, in the, Jeffrey said no, Trinidad has no, oil. In the case of Trinidad and Tobago, you have a school feeding program. In the case of Guyana, there is a similar program. I think possibly even Barbados. So there, ha, there are many interventions that different governments have taken. However, I accept the point that, that you have made that in the area of poverty, it's a phenomenon that should concern all policymakers, and we need to act collectively to address the issue. The point, I think the point with Jones is also making too is that FAO, for example, right? A part of, F, a part of F, FAO's regional global agenda, it has a food, a food feeding program where, it, where, where it, it, is, it is part of its program to introduce uh, school meals at the primary school level, right? Because of this very point that he makes, you know what I mean? And, and it's, it's twofold, addressing hunger and addressing reintroducing local foods to these school children. Because in the Bahamas, for example, we have become a fast food American eating people. And as a result of that, we, we got all kinds of diseases which is, are a big cost to our healthcare system. You see, that's how you feel an organization. That's how you, f that's how. FAO is, is being felt in the region through the stomach. Yeah, well, unfortunately, <laughs> we are not an organization such as FAO with a school feeding program okay. across the region. Let's look at another area of, 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 of social development then. Um, growing incidents of crime yeah. and violence yeah. um, in this region. You are from Trinidad, Trinidad originally. And you would know of the incidence of, of violence, crime and violence Kidnapping. there uh, in, in Trinidad. We have, a, we have a growing number of very angry young men uh, in, in particular uh, in the region. What do you do? You are a devel development man. You've worked with UNDP and now you are secretary, a deputy secretary general of the Commonwealth. Yeah. How do we address this growing incidence um, of, of crime and violence in the Caribbean? Well, I think there are several reasons associated with the rising levels of crime and violence. Huh? 
One is the issue of youth and boys' underachievement, A. B, I think what I believe is happening as well is that the, the border between Mexico and the United States in terms of the, the drug flow has been remarkably tightened in the last several years. And I actually believe that the narco traffickers, if you wish to call them that, they are looking for easier and more porous routes across the Caribbean. So one phenomenon I believe that is taking place is that you have a lot of, of crime, not all, but a lot of crime that's gang related and related to turf and the drug trade. I don't know the Bahamas well enough, but I think that's, that's one contributory factor, factor, if not to the Bahamas, to the rest of the region. So that I think uh, a concerted collective effort has to be made with key partners, the United States and others. B, in terms of, of what you do with boys who are underachieving, you know there's this African proverb that it takes a village to raise a child. So when I was growing up, for example, and perhaps with both of you all as well, is that if I was a bit mischievous, my neighbor could have scolded me. And if I go and complain to my father, I'd probably get, I'd probably get double the scolding. Yeah? And what we see emerging in the Caribbean, I believe, is that we have moved away from a more communal and community approach to, to bringing up a family to a much more nuclear and individualistic approach. And I think, to be honest, that we may not have assessed that. I don't know sociologically what the data will say, but I actually believe that's a major contributory factor. Um, that so, so, I, so your neighbor is no longer your keeper or your child's keeper. And I think that's a big issue for us in the Caribbean. So whereas materially we may have progressed on some fronts, notwithstanding the challenges, you spoke about the food that we eat, right? But similarly, the, the way that we live as a community, I think that has changed. I think what is so important is that we really have to return to, to core family values huh? and the values that, that, that make us special in the Caribbean. Yeah, but there are many young men and women who are angry because of uh, a decline in social justice in some of uh, these countries in, in our Caribbean. The access to food, access to shelter. good housing, shelter, access to a whole lot of things. What, what kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, that, that may be a contributory factor. I don't know if that's a contributory factor for a 14-year-old boy or a 15-year-old boy. He's I, angry? I, I, I don't know. I don't have the data, so I, I can't comment knowledgeably. But what I do think is that putting everyone in prison, all the young boys, is not going to solve the problem. Eh? What you need, really need to have is a integrated approach to dealing with the challenge. The issue of crime and boys on the achievement is not a phenomenon for the Ministry of National Security alone to deal with or the police force. It's for social development, it's for education, it's for the for civil society. It's for you and myself. And you gentlemen, you all on national TV. I, I, I take it that in the upcoming conference next June, uh, you're going to be talking a lot about underachievement. No, this is a big and a really, really critical issue. But, but yes. Mr. Mirage, Please. In, in, in the Commonwealth planning, how, what role does, for example, regionalization play in it? You know, the problems in Sub-Saharan Africa, very different from the problems in the Caribbean. Does, it, does the Commonwealth have a, a regional approach? Because what you articulated a few minutes ago is what every Commonwealth or CARICOM country is facing. But is there a regional approach by the Commonwealth Secretary to help us extricate ourselves from yeah, these issues? But, but in terms of the work that we are doing on youth and, and achievement, the only place we are doing it in the Caribbean. So yes, there is a regional approach. Secondly, the problems of sub-Saharan Africa may be different in terms of the scale from that of the Caribbean. But we have the entire Pacific, and the Pacific has small island developing states, just, just like the Caribbean. I don't think you can do development and do planning on a global one-size-fits-all basis. Eh? You need to be cognizant of the spe specific regional dimensions. Hence the reason when we do our advocacy work and we are making a case for the international financial institutions on issues associated with small island developing states, we are actually saying that the circumstances are special. They are different. They are more vulnerable. You can do this middle income per capita classification because one hurricane or one 9-11 can wipe out all the gains that you have made. You know, you know one of the things that disturbed me? To give an example, 
you mentioned the fact that the, 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 the drug trafficking and the human trafficking, right? Drug trafficking, I didn't say. Well, human the human, and, yeah. and human trafficking, because yeah. we, we encounter both of that, right? Big countries, big countries expect us who got trouble buying food, who got trouble buying medicine, who got trouble providing housing, right? To control these problems when the market is them. And then when they don't think that we're doing enough, they want to put sanctions against us. And I don't hear England and Australia and Canada in th these places like the UN speaking against those kinds of actions. They're silent, Mr. Mr. Uh, 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 Maharaj. And if you if you are a fellow if you're a fellow Commonwealth member, and your members are experiencing these in inequities, shouldn't you speak up? Well, I think that if one country remains silent, that doesn't mean that we should either, because we have equal access to the international forum. Yeah, but Do should the Commonwealth as an organization um, speak up, for instance, uh, when uh, the pressure is being brought to bear on countries in the Caribbean uh, over narco trafficking? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I think in terms of if the issue is raised, certainly we will be more than happy you to know, raise it. I'll, uh, just one, one minute, though. So I can give you a specific example. This whole APD, the air passenger tax, for example, mm -hmm. that has affected the Caribbean in a, in a significant way. Our Secretary General, for example, did a lot of advocacy in terms of asking that this matter be redressed. Huh? I mean, one consequence has been due to this collective action of the Commonwealth heads of government, ministers of foreign affairs have seen a reduction and we hope that there can be a further reduction you in know, the future. There's only one issue where I think really resonated with Bahamians in terms of Commonwealth action. This is released in Nelson Mandela. Joan you can think of any other? Right? The, 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 the Caribbean played a leading role in the release of Nelson Mandela, because countries like England and them, they were in sympathy because of trade. They were in sympathy with, 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 with what is going on in South Africa. And, 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 and if it left to, to, to them, Nelson Mandela still probably would be in jail. Right or wrong? Well, I don't know. I'm <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't speculate on the result. All I can say, I was happy that Nelson Mandela became the president of, of, yeah, of South Africa, and I happened to be in Tanzania but, during but that year. But Maharaj, um, <laughs> you know, the, the Commonwealth is viewed as a social club. Um, uh, you have Commonwealth parliamentary uh, association, association <laughs> meetings. Uh, you have uh, meetings of other... Uh, bodies in the in the Commonwealth but in terms of how these things impact the average citizen of the Commonwealth countries as Godfrey said they're not being felt so so let me give you the example I don't know if if viewers are aware of the highly indebted poor country initiative you all recall maybe 15 years ago or so you had a phenomenon of places like Jamaica and Guyana owing even more money than they do now. I mean, 75% of export earnings were going just to service their, their national debts. It's the Commonwealth Secretariat that did the analytical work and did and made the case for debt forgiveness for these countries. So in the case of Guyana, for example, with this initiative, the average citizen obviously eventually would feel the benefit of the impact of this because there was more money to build schools, more money for education, more money for teachers, Resources that were being diverted to paying huge debt obligations were re-diverted to the citizens of the country. Now, we are not an organization with a, with a country office presence in all Commonwealth members, so we have to work a bit differently. But yes, I, I, I would certainly say that we have done some really interesting work that have had an impact on the life of citizens. Mm. Um, well, you know, we, we are living next door to the United States of America. And... Um, it's a, the biggest economy in the world, uh, and the United States of America has been operating sometimes with impunity um, in many areas of, of, of our national life. Um, 
one of the leaders in blacklisting the Bahamas in terms of um, financial services. Uh, and uh, tremendous pressure brought to bear on our economy. Destabilization of our economy. Uh, uh, and you, you wonder, where is the Commonwealth? I'm also happy that you have raised this question, because in the discussion that we had with the G20, La Francophonie, Commonwealth countries, and the G20 in Washington, four peoples were presented, and one technical people was on these offshore financial centers. And what we as a Commonwealth said is that the requirements being asked of, of, of small countries such as the Bahamas, for them to implement all these requirements, they are onerous for them to do it you know, as required in such a short space of time. So we have elevated this to the highest possible levels, and we will continue to advocate with a view that technical support can be provided and the time can be given for a country like the Bahamas to make the modifications, but over a longer but, period yeah, of but time. Yeah, but in the meantime, uh, the economy of the Bahamas and other economies in the region are being decimated. Well, I don't know if the, the economies are being decimated. I know they're being adversely impacted by well, these issues. Adversely but impacted uh, to, to the yeah. point of being destroyed yeah. in some areas. Yeah. But, but my, my own view in terms of, of the Caribbean, I think that it's a good idea that, that countries are moving to diversify their economies. I think we need to have a vision and paint a picture of a Caribbean in 2050. What do we want that to be? We're missing we're missing and, 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 and in painting that picture, we also have to take ownership in terms of our own decisions and to make policy decisions that will result in a diversified and a stronger economy. But when we make these policy decisions, uh, they are countered by the United States and other uh, uh, d developing countries. In, in the case of agriculture, um, we got three in this preferential treatment. There are all sorts of preferential <laughs> treatment <laughs> that, 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 that came to bear on, on, on the Caribbean and, and caused a decline yeah, in, in, in agricultural it's, output. It's, yeah. Yeah. I think, listen, the, 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 the future of the Caribbean, right? The, the, what is happening in the world now is that nobody is producing one item anymore. Nobody is producing one item. So if you want to make a smartphone, then the batteries produced in China, the chip is produced in another country, the case is produced in another country, and the skills for the future, they are very, very different. And that's why I think education is important. And as we think as a Caribbean people, we have to think what products can we make? What are the inputs that we can do best in the Caribbean? And maybe offshore financial sector, and maybe it's sugar it's cane, maybe it's a range of issues. I, I gotta get this. Yes, yes. Get yeah, you, you, you'll pick that. Uh, Godfrey has to respond to that, but let's take this break here and we'll come right back. Mm -hmm.